Okay, now that we got our primary part, I think we'll attack the timing area next. Now let's take this off and see what we have inside here. See if there's anything in here or not. Honestly can't remember where this motor came from. I do know that I have a frame to go with it. Hey, look at that. We got some points in there. Points cover off. Two pillar bolts here for the points plate. And this wire is going to need to come through the hole. So we'll have to remove these ends. Oh, that one just came apart. Oh well. I think we'll squirt a little WD-40 in there, and that'll probably aid that wire coming through there. Oh boy, she's stuck. Oh, there it goes. There she comes. One points plate removed. Okay, now we've got our advanced unit. Oh boy, that thing is not advancing anything. It's stuck. Center bolt out of the advance. And now we're gonna utilize the advance puller that we have available on the website. And you just gotta take care to make sure you're using the correct end of this because there is two different thread pitches. That one doesn't act like it wants to go in there. We'll try the other end. That is the correct end for this advance. Early and late threads on there. And this is just like a slide hammer action. This also has a taper that goes into the end of the camshaft. No big deal there. Got those off. Okay, here's the uh, cheese head screws I was speaking of that are normally found on these motors. So this may be an indication that this uh, motor's not been apart before. Judging by the fact that it had socket head on this side and these on this side, you would think if someone took this apart they probably would have changed the screws. Oh boy. Now, for stuff like this, I really like uh, snap-on screwdrivers. Most high quality screwdrivers will have a hex on the shank where you can utilize a wrench to help you. Look at that. Gives you a little more leverage. So again, if you get some stubborn ones, get your chisel back out, shock them with the chisel. Oh, that's a bummer. We got a little chip out of the timing cover. That's too bad. Suppose it could be welded up and ground down and polished. These timing covers aren't too difficult to find if you do find that you need to replace one. And one thing worth noting, you're going to have a couple of longer screws in these locations, short in these. 
Okay, now we're ready to take the cover off. We have all the screws out. The advance is removed. Shock it with our dead blow. I think she's been on there for a while. Absolutely do not put a screwdriver in between this cover and the crankcase. You will create a leak. Speaking of leaks, we got a little bit of oil coming out of there. There she comes. And that's what you're gonna find underneath there. Okay, cam gears, intermediate gear, pinion gear, oil pump. No big mystery going on here. This is standard thread. These are left hand threads. If you put your impact on here and try to take that off in the normal fashion, you're probably gonna screw it up. Left threads. All right, we'll take the oil pump off. You notice these nuts are, don't have a whole lot of flat to them. And they are beveled. Make sure you, they have a lock washer. So make sure you put those in your parts box for later. When it comes time to put her back together. Okay, then your pump should just slide right off of there. Haha. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. You know, once in a while it is okay to pry on things carefully. Like so. There's your oil pump. Now we can gain access to removing these three nuts. Once again, left hand thread. Since I don't have a compressor here in the garage, it's broken. I will be doing this by hand. I will show you a nifty way to do this that works very well. All right. Best method to lock these together, to loosen these, is to use an old pinion gear. I know what you're thinking. You don't have one. Well, you should maybe get one. It makes this job a hell of a lot easier. See how that just locked? See it? And I'm guessing this is going to be pretty tight because it should have been torqued. Give it a shot. Oh yeah, she's a definitely tight. So, we're gonna cheat. Old fork tube. And look at that, boy, came right loose, no problem. A little bit of leverage. Once again, pinion nut is standard thread. There we go. Nut also has a little shoulder on it. That's how you can tell the difference between these because these look kind of similar. That engages with the lip on there. Okay, once again, left hand threads. I don't think we'll waste time trying to break this up without our bar on there. 
our fork tube. There she goes. And you may notice on the intake cam, it has this little tit here. Basically, that's what drives the oil pump. You have this part slides over that. This goes on that. As the gear spins around, it moves these plungers up and down, which in turn sends the oil through those ports. Pretty ingenious. And you also may notice that this tit on here says LH. That stands for left hand. One more nut to go here. This one, that'll work. just like downtown. All three nuts removed. We can go ahead and take our locking tool out of there, which is nothing more than one of those. This is from a pre-unit, so it's not as wide, but either one will work. Now you can go ahead and take your intermediate gear out. That just slides right off, no problem. And these gears do have your timing marks on, which you can review that in your workshop manual when you're reassembling this, everything, all three of these will line up. This one will have a dot on it. This one will have a hash mark. And this one will have two dots and a hash mark. Pretty simple stuff, it's not a problem. Now you see why it's imperative that you don't uh, hit these threads with your impact with a socket over it to get these nuts off. Because if you booger up that thread, you won't be able to get the puller on there. This is a cam gear puller and installer tool. This is the part that will remove it and this part also installs it with some different adapters that you put on here. Now this is standard thread. This is just going to thread on there and you want to make sure again that you are engaged all the threads on there because you're pulling on it. Then you're just going to turn this down until it contacts the end of the cam and you may have noticed there's a bunch of gnarled on here. That's because I like to hold this tool with this. That way it doesn't turn. And then you're simply going to, oh goodness gracious boy. I don't think this motor's ever been apart. That is being kind of stubborn once again. We're going to use a little leverage here. I was having a hard time turning that by hand. Well, it seems like it's starting to come off now. Yep. And now it's pulling the gear off of the end of the intake cam and she's just about off. This is also keyed and there we go. No harm, no foul. Generally as I take these apart I'll get another one of my cardboard boxes and I'll just set everything in the box. This one goes here this one here, this one in the middle, and this one at the bottom with the keys and all the parts. Here's the key right there. And side cutters again. Just carefully pry that little key out of the keyway on the end of the cam. 
put that with the gear we just removed. Now, when you're pulling the exhaust cam, you don't want this portion of the tool that just met that as I was, you saw how hard I was pushing on that with my additional leverage. We don't want this to go down inside there because that's where this was. So there's a piece that we can put in there. And this little piece right here will go on there like so, so that you're pushing against this surface and this instead of this portion of that tool going in the hole and screwing things up. So be sure you have that on there. Uh, what I like to do now to make my life a little easier is I will lay the motor over. That way I'm not fumbling with this, trying to get that to stay on there while I'm pulling it. So we'll go ahead and turn this back out. And then I'm just going to lay this kind of up on its edge so I can put this in the hole in there so it doesn't fall out while I put this portion on. So again, make sure that you get your tool to engage all the threads available there because we are using those threads to pull. We'll go ahead and proceed here. Once again, we got our little chinga inside there. We ran this up to touch it. This is threaded on all the way. We're gonna put our channel locks on there again. Oh boy, she's a tight one too. And there she comes now, she's getting easier. See the gear coming off of the camshaft. And there it is. We didn't booger nothing up. Once again, don't forget to use the little chinga that comes with the tool. Okay, don't forget to take the other key out of that one, put it with the gear. So the only thing we have left to do in here is to remove the pinion gear. And we have a special tool for that too. There she is, pinion gear remover. Okay, once again, make sure that part's backed off. You're going to loosen this. And these three pieces are going to go over the gear. Once we get it loose enough. And then you're gonna tighten this down before you start pulling, you want to check to make sure. Yeah, see that one didn't go over. So now we're going to reposition that because you don't want to start pulling if all three of those aren't. Okay, once again, you can just roll it over with the tool on there. You want to be sure that all three of those, we'll call them fingers on that tool are over the edge of the pinion gear. There's a gap in between the pinion gear and where the tool goes. And then you're gonna tighten that up by hand and you're just gonna run this in. I don't think I've ever had a pinion gear come off as easily as this one is. And there we go. Once again, we have another keyway. And now you can plainly see how the tool was around the edges of the gear. It's imperative that all three of those are on the back side of this or it will just pull the tool right back off in your hand. There's your pinion gear. Pretty much in uh, necessity, I don't really know of any other way to get that gear off of there without this tool. 
And it, the same goes for that tool. Now we have our key. Once again, side cutters to the rescue. Oh, look, that one's not really in there all that tight. Got her out. And then we also have a washer. There she is. Okay. And that's all there is to the timing chest area is now completely disassembled in preparation for splitting the crankcases. All right, let's go ahead and remove the transmission. Once again, we got some uh, cheese head screws on here. So we'll utilize our fancy schmancy screwdriver here. have a stubborn screw on the bottom. We're going to chisel that son of a gun. Uh, some of you guys may have one of those impact screwdrivers where you basically put a bit in there and you beat it with a hammer. That would also work. This is pissing me the f off. Trying to turn, but I think my chiseling may have defeated. Oh, there she comes. It's coming, gang. have one more fastener on here. Should be two nuts. Looks appears that one is missing. There we go. Chisel time's over. Go ahead and finish taking these out. Now, if the chisel method did not work on that screw, the next step would have been to get the drill motor out. And basically what you can do then is you can drill the head of the screw completely off and then you'll be able to get the cover off and the screw will still be in there. Gee, I wonder how much Transmission oil is going to come out of this thing here in a second all over the workbench. There she is. Okay. I think let's uh, grab a drain pan this time. That way, if there's a bunch of tranny fluid in here, it'll go in there instead of on my, my workbench is plenty oiled enough for today. Once again, Give her a whack. Not happening. Oop. There she comes. Oh, look at that. Hey, use the old noodle that time. There goes one of our washers we might need for later. Oh, the... OK. 
Kickstarter spring was a hanging up in there, guys. And there we go. There's your kicker cover. Kicker gear, kicker spring. Now we're getting to the heart of the matter. Okay. This is your ratcheting gear for your Kickstarter. Another bent lock tab there that we need to bend up like so. And look at that, we got lucky again. Huh. <laughs> Normally that would take a socket to come off of there. We have a flat washer, a spring, the center distance piece, and the ratcheting gear itself, lock tab, there's everything involved with that little assembly. This is your main shaft here. And boy, we got some more oil in there that we need to get out of there. And then we'll get some more fasteners out. We'll pop this cover off, take the tranny out. Okay. All right. Phillips head inside here. Oh yeah. That's a good thing because I don't think we'd have been able to get the chisel in there. And then we have the socket head one here. And last but not least, the hex head on the bottom in the front. And this one kind of has a shallow head on it too. That oil lines slightly in the way. Bend that out of the way just a skosh. There we go. Okay, ready for a big oily mess again? Okay, so just to review, three fasteners. Little bit of corrosion going on there. Hmm. Hmm. There's our inner tranny cover. And now we can go ahead and dump whatever else might be left in there besides that gear. And let's get one of our boxes so we can go ahead and show you how easy it is to remove the rest of this stuff here. Okay, the gear that you saw fall off of there belongs to the lay shaft. You can just pull the main shaft right out, bada bing. And you can take the other gears. If you're not familiar with this stuff, it's probably not a bad idea to just put it back where it belongs when you take it out. And you have another gear inside here on the main shaft. Actually, we'll go ahead and pull the, pull the uh, shift shaft out. That'll make it easier to get these other gears out. There she is. OK, 
Okay, then you have shift fork. Another gear that belongs on the main shaft right here. And now we could just yank the whole counter shaft off in one big lump sum. Bam, done. And then you've got fourth gear, which goes through the bearing in the case, which also belongs on the main shaft. And then last, we have the selector, cam selector, cam plate. And here is a roller from one of the shift forks, has a little roller deal on there, a little roller on each one that rolls along in these little grooves when she's shifting gears. And last but not least, doesn't want to come off, stuck. Okay, we won't be too concerned about that, but there is a thrust washer in there. There's a thrust washer on here, right here, late on the lay shaft, and there's another one inside the case, right there. It's stuck on the inside. We'll get it out after we get stuff cleaned up here. And that's it, transmission's removed. Right, so we've essentially stripped all, the majority of the parts off of here that we need to in order to split the crankcases. Uh, that'll be coming up in the next installment of Tear Down Your 650 Triumph Engine. Now get out there in your garages and rip these things apart. Do it. Do it now. Holy guacamole! This son of a gun's got a bunch of oil in the crankcase, gang. Oh goodness. Hang on. Regroup. Let's get her back upright here. More than one way to get that oil out of this motor. Son of a bitch!